Okay, so we use the trapezium rule when it's not possible for us to integrate. If you can integrate algebraically, you should choose to do that. This is for the situations where it's a function you don't know how to integrate. Now imagine you've got a, a curve like this, and you want to find the area under the curve between 1 and 5. And it's some sort of function we don't know how to integrate. So what we would do is we'd approximate it to a trapezium, like this. So we'd find the area, we'll call the length of, um, th sorry, the height of the curve at 1 is y0, and the height of the curve at the other end is y1. You'll see um, why we start with y0 a bit later on. So the area there, we're just using the formula for a trapezium. So we add together the two parallel sides, divide by 2, and then multiply by the distance between those two parallel sides. Now, we can make this a little bit better, a better approximation, if we actually do it with two trapezia. So here we've split it into um, three lengths that we need to consider for our two trapezium. So we've got y0, y1, y2. And so our area now will be the first trapezium plus the second. And we can go further than that. If we split it into even more trapezia, then we find the area of each one. And we add them all together. Now you'll notice in that last one in particular that you get repeats of some of those values. So for example, we've got y1 in the first trapezium and the second one needed to calculate um, that area. We've got y2 um, needed for two of the trapezium. It's where there's a shared side. That happens twice. So we can simplify this formula a little bit. So if we want to find the area under the curve or the integral between um, two points, A and B, and our curve is y, then that's approximately equal to the area of the trapezium that we can split it up into. So we take out the half that happens in all of those uh, formula from where we add the two sides together and divide by 2. And then each of them will also be multiplied by h, which is the width of the trapezia. They all have to be the same width for this to work. And then we multiply it by all of our y lengths. Now we can make that um, a little tidier by collecting together the things that get um, repeated twice or, or used twice. So the, the first and the last one are only used once since they're the end points of our trapezia and all the middle ones get used twice. Okay, so let's see an example of this. So we're going to use the trapezium rule with five intervals to estimate that uh, integration to three decimal places. Now we're always told how many intervals to split it up into and they have to be evenly spaced. So h in this case will be the difference between our boundaries, so 2 minus 1, divided by the number of intervals we have, which is 5, which gives us h is 0.2. And then we need to work out each of the um, y values, the heights uh, for those trapeziums, or the, the lengths of those um, those lines going up towards the curve. So our first value, we start at x is 1, that's our first boundary, and then we just pop 1 into our formula for y, which is from our um, equation in the question, and we get 0 0.5. Our next x value is 1.2, since we're going along in steps of 0.2, and we put that in for y, and then we carry on with all of those, we're going up another 0 0.2 for our next x value, and then so on and so forth until we've got all of them. Now you should be able to see why we started with y0 here. It makes it a little easier to keep track of so that when you've got five intervals you end up with y5. So you start with y0 being your starting point before you've gone anywhere and then y5 is your end point. Okay now putting it into the trapezium rule looks like this. where that two times part was all of those numbers in the middle there. Now you might be asked to think about whether this is an over or under estimate. Um, for that you'd need to know what the curve looks like. So this particular one looks a bit like this. Now between one and two, you can see that that's sort of bending down. 
Um, now, if you imagine a straight line between the, the one and the two, making a, a, just that one trapezium, um, that helps you to figure out whether it's an under or over estimate. So that orange bit there ducks down below what would be a straight line, so that would give you an underestimate for all of the trapezium. Whoops, sorry, I'm mixing up my words. So the, the curve would be underneath what the trapezium would give us, so the trapezium rule itself would actually give us an overestimate. All of those trapezia that we worked out would come to slightly more than what the curve actually is.